Hello, fellow teachers and friends and parents and students and anyone else that found their way here. Uh, I'm Ryan with Notes and Numbers, and this is a little video about how to improve your sound in Zoom music lessons. If you haven't seen an earlier video I made about this same topic, uh, there's a little thing that just popped out, but it starts with getting a USB mic, or really any external mic. Um, all the stuff that we use for basically everything these days, they're all things like iPads or iPhones or computers that are built more with eyes in mind than ears. And so anything that is built with ears in mind is almost every time going to outclass anything from that former category. So with that in mind, uh, I've seen people after seeing, you know, either after seeing that video or just in their own explorations, saying something along the lines of, I got a USB mic or my student got a USB mic and they still sound terrible or I don't know it is any difference whatsoever. And that can come from a few different sources. So we're going to kind of check that stuff out today. Um, First place to look is going to be, as always almost, Zoom settings. If you find this useful, make sure to like and subscribe. It'll keep me making them, and it you know, keeps you in the loop when more th stuff comes out as it comes out. So, I know we all know about original sound, and if you don't, again, a little thing just popped out that's about how to get settings set up in Zoom, and you should check that out and then return here. Um, but assuming everybody else watching does already know about original sound, something to be aware of is that when you plug in a new mic, it will generally reset those settings. Uh, so if we look over here, so I'm gonna be playing for my USB mic with this Fifine K670. So plugged in currently, and this is, by the way, how you select the mic. If you haven't already figured this out, when you plug in a USB mic, it will not necessarily just start using that mic in Zoom. You have to actually go down to the microphone symbol and click this little up caret, find the mic under select a microphone, and select it. Once you've done that, then you'll want to go up here and turn on original sound. Having done that, and this is the really the thing I think that gets people a lot because you know we set up for our lessons and then we break down and then a week later we set up or whatever it may be. So if I unplug this mic, it'll show you kind of that it did and it switched over to something else and so now we can see it's not on my list over here anymore and I've been reverted to what I normally use. If I go ahead and plug it back in, the Fifine, that is, then what we notice is kindly, it has reverted for me just now to the microphone I had selected before. But if we look up at our settings, the original sound is off. So I would have to turn it back on. And you can actually pick, if you're on a computer, anyway, one mic of however many you have available to you uh, that will always have original sound on. That'll just auto do, do that for you. Um, so if you're only using the one, particularly like if you're a student and you're only using the one, you can just set that setting and then you shouldn't worry about that part of it too much. Um, so those are kinds of the things that come up in Zoom in the capacity of its settings anyway. Uh, and the second thing we're going to look at is going to be tuning your mic. So if we jump over here, we'll find my little five fine K670, I think is the name of it. I'll put a little link in the notes below. Um, you'll notice a few things about it. On the one hand, it's sitting on my piano. That is not generally a great place for a mic to be. And if you're working on not a piano, so any stringed instrument or brass or anything like that, or wind instruments, the equivalence of what I'm about to go over is essentially don't stand right next to the mic. You want to have it probably five or six feet away from you. In the same way that you wouldn't speak at a regular volume into somebody's ear from right here, because it would feel loud, it would feel painful, it would feel unfortunate. So with that same idea in mind, this would not be a great place for me to set this mic. For a piano, I would want to have it ideally off to the right side. If you put it off to the left, the bass can be a little too heavy, overwhelm the rest of it. But off to the right side, and ideally on some sort of I don't know, bedside table or something like that. If you can get a little boom, that will let you actually hang it down like this or something like that, so much the better. But at least just not on the instrument and off to the right side. Other than positional elements of tuning a mic, something else to consider is this little knob here. They don't all have it. Some of them you just plug in and that's that, and then you set everything volumetric inside, or dynamic that is, uh, inside of whatever your computer. And so you don't have to worry about this. However, some of them, and I think it's a handy feature to have, have this nice little gain knob. Uh, if you have it, like I do here, turned all the way up, so it's at about 5 o'clock, if you think of positions on a clock, 
that's going to be pretty freaking loud and probably not the way you want to hear things. And so we're actually going to run a little test right now where I'm going to run you through what it sounds like when I play at a couple different volumes in here. So let me switch over my audio real quick. So if I speak at a relatively measured volume right now, it might not be terrible for you to hear me. I'm going to play music in a moment or some on the piano, so you'll probably want to put your headphones on your shoulders so it's not incredibly loud. So that's what it sounds like when it's at five o'clock. I don't think that sounded great. It blows out the sound. What about if I take it down to, say about one o'clock? So probably better, maybe still too loud. You'll have to kind of test this yourself. But just for a third data point, this is at about 10 o'clock or so. Which, not hearing it instantaneously at this very moment as I'm doing this, I have to assume probably was the best of those three. I'll find out as I go back through and finish editing this video. Uh, in any case, hopefully you get the idea that you want to make sure that you have the positioning of it right, and then also that its actual gain levels and all that stuff is set up the way you want them to be, uh, in an optimized fashion. Finally, let's go visit the last source of problems. which is muting. I don't think people realize how incredibly large the difference is between being muted while your student plays, or while your teacher plays if you're a student, and not. Even if you're wearing headphones, even if you're doing all the other sort of gold standard, keep yourself from hearing yourself and those kinds of things, all of those elements that you've added into your setup, it's still useful if you have a halfway decent mic to mute yourself while they're playing. Um, and I've got a little video demonstration of this that we're going to check out in just a second. Uh, but to make sure that you understand why this is going on, think of Zoom as having essentially a switchboard algorithm. It's trying to figure out who's important, when to listen, what to send, and all that stuff. Part of what we turn off when we turn on original sound is we turn off the software that figures that stuff out rather well. What that means is, for instance, my cat's water fountain or the air purifier in the background. Any kind of ambient noise can get picked up by my lapel mic and say to Zoom, essentially, hey, listen to me, even though nobody cares what my cat's water fountain is doing or what that heater or air purifier is doing. That's not important. It doesn't compare to what the student is playing. And yet, Zoom doesn't really have the wherewithal to make that judgment call. So check this video out. And the next time, if you've done all the other stuff, if you're definitely the, the mic is picked, the right mic is selected in Zoom, definitely original sound is on, it's in a good position, you've got the gain levels dead on, and you're still running into trouble, just try muting and see what happens. If you mute when they play, they mute when you play, it'll make a world of difference. Um, check this out. If you found this all useful, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, it'll keep me making them, and it'll keep you in the loop when I do. Uh, and otherwise, take care, everyone. Great, thank you. Um, so now we're going to switch over to the snowball mic that's pictured in the screen. That was just the built-in speakers on her MacBook. Um, and then we're going to leave me unmuted here. So if you want to play once more for us, please. Thank you. And then one last time, but I'm going to be muted this time around. Okay. Still on the snowball.
Thank you so much, dear. Okay.